In this video you will learn what is that library and how it helps us to validate our data. As you can see here, I am on the official website zot.dev and here we have a single line TypeScript first schema validation with static type inference, which actually means we will use this library if we have some object and we want to validate it through specific rules. For example, you have a user and you have name, ID and age. And then you can create a schema where inside you are defining rules and then you just check your object if it is valid or not. And the most interesting point for me is that Zod is not the first library that can do such stuff. We had previous libraries like for example Yoop, which was also quite popular. As you can see here, it was super similar. We have something like user schema. Here we are defining an object with different rules for every single property. And it also works inside TypeScript just like Zod is working. So from my opinion, a lot of people are talking about Zod library nowadays just because this library was promoted better than the others. And the last thing that I want to say here before we will start coding is that Zod is just a library which will do this checking of your values in the runtime. Yes, we are talking here about TypeScript and schema validation, but actually the main idea that we are calling it to check our data in the runtime. So let's look on the example what problem we are trying to solve. And two most popular use cases where you will get some runtime data that you don't expect in your TypeScript code and you think that your code is bulletproof is first of all forms where a user puts something or API calls because you have no idea what you will get back from the API. And as you can see here, I have a small Angular project just with the table and the list of users which are coming from our backend. And as you can see here inside our network, we are making a request on every single page reload. And this is our request, localhost 3004 slash users, and here are our options. Most importantly, we are getting here back an array of objects with ID, name and age. And it is all working fine, but at some point it will break. How we can do that? We can jump inside our mock database. And as you can see here, I have the last user and I want to remove here name and just right now. And actually it can be possible that in the real project you will get not all fields from the API or fields in the wrong format or something else, which actually means you are never sure even if your whole frontend is written in TypeScript that you will get correct data. For example, in this case we are getting null inside name and when I will reload the page all our code will be broken. And yes, this whole Angular project is covered with TypeScript and it didn't help us. Why is that? Yes, we have runtime issue because we can't treat property of null. So what we are doing here inside our service, we are trying to get a name from the user when we are getting it from API and just transform it to uppercase. And in our case here in the last user, we got null, which was not expected for us and we can't call uppercase. And actually Zot fits really nice in this use case because we want to validate our API objects before we start to work with them on the client. And the first step here will be to install the library. This is by here yarn add Zod. And actually this library does not have any dependencies at all. Now let's look on our code. Inside source, app, users table, I have types and here is sorting, this is fine, and user interface. This is just TypeScript interface. It does not exist inside JavaScript, inside runtime. This is why we can't really do anything with it. This is why what I want to do now, I want to create a new file user.model.ts. And now inside here I want to import z from zod. And now here we can define a schema for the user. So let's name it user schema. And we're calling here z.object. And as you can see, it is fully typed with TypeScript, which means you are getting really awesome autocomplete. And inside we're defining all our properties. And we have just id, name and age. So here id will be z.string. Then we have here name, also string. And the last one here will be age, number. And actually you can make all the subjects and conditions much more difficult like is required, you want special length and so on, but our case is really easy. 
So we defined here our schema, but now we want to define a type from this schema. So here I will write export type, and here we will have user type. And we are calling here infirm method, and we are providing inside type of user schema. So what this does, it creates for us user type, which is a type with ID, name and age. And this is essentially what we wrote here. But we can't really use our interface inside runtime. This is why this interface is useless for us. Here we have user schema and we can use it in runtime, because this is just an object with functions inside. And from this object we can get a data type. And this is exactly the data type that we want to use in our whole application. So now we have our user schema and user type. Now we can jump inside our service, user service. And as you can see here, I have just a single get users method, which gets our data from the API with sorting. But also after this, we are getting from HTTP this user interface array. And actually, as you already saw, we don't need user interface, we can completely remove it, because we want to use this user type that we just created. This is why here I will type user type, and this is exactly the same like it was previously user array, but it was generated from our schema. This is why here we have user type array, because we are getting an array of our users. And as you can see, the whole code is working the same. But actually, we didn't do anything, we simply used this user type. What we want to do now, we want to validate our object against our schema. This is why actually here, before our map, I want to write one more map. And here we are getting access to our users, and what I want to do, I want to check every single user if it is really correct user, like inside our schema. So here we can map through every single user, we are getting access to our user, and we can call here user schema, this is the schema from Zod, dot parse, and here inside I am providing user. So what this parse method does, it validates every single object, that we throw it inside, and it will throw an error if it is not valid. As you can see here, this is the official website, we have a parse function, and we are just calling schema.parse, and we are throwing inside some data to validate. So essentially, this map is totally fine, and it won't do anything. If the check is correct, it will just return our data. If the check is not correct, then it will throw for us an error. So let's check if it's working now. I will reload the page, and now we are not getting an error inside component, because here before we are getting error from Zod, and this is totally fine, this is exactly what we want to see in development. And we are getting here a message, expected string, received null, this was exactly our problem. And in our case now, our code is fully bulletproofed, because we are sure that we are getting correct data from the API. If we are not getting correct data, we don't even try to do something inside our components. And now let's check if it's still working, if our data are correct. So here in our database, instead of null, I want to write name again. Now I'm reloading the page and we're getting our data without any errors, which actually means we successfully passed Zod validation, our data are completely valid and we can proceed with our application. So actually working with API can be really difficult, especially if this API is implemented by another team. And Zot helps you to be on the safe side, and you directly see where the problem is. And actually, if you're interested to know how to build such users table with filtering and sorting without any libraries inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.